The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hey everybody, I'm David. Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down toys, tools and appliances just to find out what's inside. Today we have a brand new console again, it's the Nintendo Switch Lite. So let's jump straight in and find out if this is another console nobody asked for, or the best thing for your Christmas list. Now, there are, literally straight out of the box, some very immediate changes. Now, we've lost the removable Joy-Cons, so it's now all in one form factor. The screen is also a little bit smaller. It used to be 6.5 inches, now 5.5 inch, although it maintains the same resolution. The removal of the Joy-Cons means, of course, you're limited to the games you can play. You, can, uh, you can't use the accelerometers in the same way. You can't play multiplayer games uh, in the same way you could. But also, we've been seeing the infrared camera, which I believe worked with the Joy-Cons, so there's uh, some lost functionality there. The box and everything included is so much smaller than the original Switch, because you had the separate Joy-Cons, you had the, the little plastic dock so you could hold them as a controller, the Switch, and of course the dock for the TV as well. But with this, it's just the box just the unit itself and when you get inside it's a nice high power USB-C charger which is still 5 and 15 volts so that's uh, 40 odd watts at uh, 15 volts or 7.5 watts at 5 volts so it's probably the same charger from the original model but that's that's it that's all you get in the box it's massively smaller than the original uh, switch. You don't have the TV dock or the accessories, it's just a console and a charger. Now, in true teardown fashion, I have not turned this on. We're gonna tear it down first, then put it back together and see if it still works. And if it doesn't work, I'll choose to believe that it was dead on arrival. So in true Nintendo style, of course we've got the tri-wing screws, but also a little bit like the, the original switch, Phillips on the edges, so they're just using the the tri-wing screws are sort of their anti-tamper, the anti-intrusion. It's not like you can't find the screwdrivers on eBay for a few pounds. Now there's a lot of stuff that we already know is going to be exactly the same as the original Switch, or very similar to it. Uh, we still know this is going to be the NVIDIA Tegra chipset, albeit a slightly upgraded version. Uh, it's got the same power output, but the new revision is less energy intensive. So the battery life on this is supposedly increased by up to 50%, which is good. If it's designed to be used on the go, not really at home, then it's gotta be a good thing, hasn't it? No, I seem to remember the original Switch was quite quite modular. It had a lot of individual boards. Now, I wonder if with this design, they've managed to consolidate that onto a single board, which would be cheaper for manufacturing. It means they can streamline the assembly a little bit as well. There we go. It just needs to be lifted, sort of that lip over the headphone socket, which is nice that they still include a headphone socket. So I don't want to complain too much about disassembling it. Oh, look, actually handwritten signing on the inside of the unit. Okay, still, still a lot of assembly has gone into the inside of this. So we start by removing this RF shield or heatsink, depending on what it is. We'll find out when we get inside. Still retains the, the passive fan, so the lower power dissipation of the upgraded main CPU is obviously not that great that they can sort of revert to passive cooling. It still requires that active cooling. Okay. Ah, so still got a nice little heat pipe from the main CPU system on the chip with the same amount of RAM. I still believe that's the 4 gig from the original. Uh, nice heat, heat sink. It's <laughs> still a cute little heatsink fan. Uh, and the battery, nicely vibration mounted. Uh, these are the, be the vibration motors, I believe. Oh no, speakers, speakers. Yeah, they're actually piped to the uh, speaker outlets on the bottom. Just the tiniest little speaker, a couple of reverberation chambers. The way this ribbon is sort of folded back on itself goes down here to the le left Joy-Con. Yeah, <laughs> left Joy-Con. I suppose it's not actually a Joy-Con anymore, the, the right side of the PCB, which of course has got the new D-pad, not the separate buttons like it was in the old version. I have to admit, if I was building this, I think I would have aimed a lot more 
to have less processes. There's still a lot of screws in here. And again, just taking this shoulder button off, it's interesting that actually we've now got a second type of switch in here. Uh, whereas we have the tactiles on this little daughter board down here, you've now got a mem membrane style switch making contact between these two pads. So we've already got two types and then down here you've got a little micro switch and a tiny screw which, there we go, stayed in place. Screws in your disassembling, especially if you don't know they're there, are the worst. Okay, so that ribbon is stuck onto the bottom, so we'll leave that in place for a little while. Let's see, just inside the next speaker enclosure. Yeah, there we go, that's the left-hand side controller. Again, it's uh, membrane-style keys. So you've got the little pads on here, a little conductive coating on the rubber. Just presses down and a couple of tactile switches top and bottom for the additional minus and home buttons. Nice simple analog stick. Four conductors, so they're probably resistive. There we go, that's the last screw. Interesting that they're, they're sort of using every opportunity they can to reject heat from the, what will be the CPU. So you've got thermal paste on the RF shielding, which connects it to a heat pipe, which runs to the heatsink fan. But you've also got thermal paste rejecting heat to the RF shield as well. Okay, so now we've got two shielded boards. One of them was the Wi-Fi in the original switch. And of course we've got the, the memory and the CPU in here. So what is under chip number two in here? We'll have to find out. Very interesting compound uh, ribbon here. A very big ground plane in there. I wonder if that's for screening. Can't imagine that the uh, game cartridges are Magnet electromagnetically sensitive. Yeah, just a big ground sheet that uh, must be for electromagnetic compatibility. The the speed of read write from the game cartridges must be fairly sensitive. You've actually got tiny little vias in the flex. I guess it's more of a flex PCB than a uh, flat ribbon. And the headphone port. Oh, it's still got a nice Wi-Fi antenna. It's good to see a device that doesn't have an embedded PCB style one. <laughs> I, think, I think we established in an earlier video when I was talking about antenna design that it's not my field of expertise, but people were kind to me. <laughs> but I do know that I definitely prefer proper antenna than uh, on board. Interesting that actually on the PCB here it's labelled side B, and similarly on this one, side B, side A, side A and side B. Ta-da! There's, <laughs> yeah. Across across the board, you've still got those really wide uh, differential pairs from the USB-C. So, a lot's changed, but not a lot has changed. It's nice that there are test points on the PCB for your own debugging, if you ever get that involved in it, or actually if you ever wanted to do mods to it, having exposed test pads really does make the difference. Okay, so I've done a little bit of looking things up, and of course we can confirm this is the NVIDIA Tegra chip. Again, like the previous Switch, it is still branded NVIDIA. There's no Nintendo uh, identification on here at all, really. There's no custom chips, uh, not even labeling. These are still the same 2 gig RAM as the original uh, Switch. And uh, I should have realized, really, I hadn't even thought about it. This is the 128 gig eMMC onboard memory, which is a Samsung eMMC 5.1 chip. 128 gig on board. I uh, haven't actually turned it on yet, so I don't know how much <laughs> usable space you have. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. And then on the back, we've got some passives, some passives, a lot of passives, some aggregator chips, and display driver. The hardware inside the Switch, it's interesting to see some of the slight iterative changes, and obviously it's going to be more simplistic. There's less hardware that goes into one of these, so it's not too surprising uh, anything we found in here. What is really going to be interesting is to find out whether this is a big hit on the market. Have they done the research and found that Switch players are mostly playing their Switches remotely and don't play them docked in the console? And this is the middle ground. Either way, I guess the selling figures will tell. Um, thank you for watching. If you have an idea for a teardown that you'd like to see in the future, let us know over at the Element 14 community. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Now, the challenge with this one is I rather suspect that I'm going to be asked to give this away in a future competition, or at the very least, I'm going to get complained at in the comments if it doesn't go back together. So guess what I'm going to spend the next hour doing? Thanks internet. <laughs>
Oh, better go get some tin to reapply on here. Uh, yeah, we don't want it overheating and breaking before I've even uh, played a game on it.